Hey guys, it's Dan Strong with Excel VBA is fun. Thanks for being here again. Uh, today we have a quick lesson. I'm going to show you something really cool. So let me open up an actual app that we have, a partner and I have. Um, and what I want to show you today is how to use these uh, these labels here that are dynamic. So you see how right now it says there are 29 analysis remaining. This is the default label so I could be clicking here changing this or that or the other and that label that's default is just sitting pretty but when I hover over one of the buttons it actually changes the label temporarily it says this this adds a new analysis record so it's kind of like having the control tip or the tool tip text that hovers and appears but I just find that some apps that do this are just really cool looking and it really captures the attention of the user when that that label that's been static for some time decides to change it's like oh I have to see what this says oh so that button adds a new analysis record and then if I click or if I hover here excuse me this accesses a new purchase uh, viewing a client record that's being shared with you or sharing something but if, as soon as I hover away from that button it changes back to the default. So I want to show you on a very basic level how to do that. So we're going to open up our own brand new workbook and we're going to work through this and uh, just maybe a couple buttons and show you how to make this label work. So you can do that with your own programs immediately. So let's go ahead and close this one down and I'll open up a new workbook. Alright so in this brand new workbook what we're going to do first of all, let's go ahead and give it a file save as. I'm going to go ahead and save it in a directory really quick where I normally uh, would share it and then I'll go ahead and give you guys a share link. So I'm going to fast forward. And we're back. So now what we're going to do is we're going to of course hit Alt F11 to get into the Visual Basic Editor. Alt F11. Here's the Visual Basic Editor for us. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and create a new user form. So you click on this little drop down here and click on user form. Okay. So what we're going to do in the user form is it's going to be pretty basic. We're just going to have, first of all, a label. So you click on the label control. If you don't have this toolbox, you can go to view and click on toolbox and it'll pop right back up. So click on label and let's just drag it along this base at the bottom. Now, maybe we shrink it a little bit. Let's see here. Scooch it. Something like that, okay? And you're going to take off the default caption, which is the name, label one. Boo. I just click and I deleted that. So it's this clear, invisible label, right? Uh, you can change the background color, but I'm going to leave it the same color as whatever my default background is. That's important. So it blends in. It just looks like it's text just floating out there. Okay, so that's your label. In fact, we could give it a name like... Um, L B L I N F O, label info, or something like that. You can name it whatever you want. Now I'm going to add a couple buttons. So, uh, really quick, I'm just going to grab a command button. And I'm going to click here. And then I'm going to hold my control key and click and drag. That will make a copy, a duplicate of those two. And just to make sure they're aligned, I will highlight both of them. And I'm going to hit Alt. O A T. What that did is that did uh, the format is the O, and then A was a line, and then T was top. So I actually aligned these two buttons based on the topmost facet. So I'll do that again. If this one was down here and I selected it, control click this one, then it would try to align this one up, up to the other one's standard. So Alt O A T, like the word oat. Okay, so now they're aligned by their tops. Now we have two buttons. Now the captions are uh, meaningless. We're not going to worry about those. You can click on them and change the caption right here all you want. So you could say uh, BTN1 and perhaps cancel or exit or something like that. But you can set your, your buttons, whatever you want. You can also name the actual name of the button that we can refer to in code by clicking on the name field and overwriting that. So right now we'll leave it command button 1 and command button 2 because frankly I just don't care. For this exercise it's fine. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to double click on the background, anywhere on the background of the user form. So like maybe this little blank area here. So the default thing that pops up is the user form click event. But I don't want my users to have to click on the background of the form. I want them to hover their mouse and so every time they hover their mouse away from the buttons it's going to do something special which we're going to review in just a sec but whenever you think hover 
think mouse move. So let's change the click event to a mouse move event. Okay, when you think mouse move, that's a hover when they hover their mouse over there. So forget the user form underscore click event, we don't need it. But what this will do is anytime they hover anywhere on the background of the user form, uh, as long as it's not a button in the way or a label or something, it will do whatever's in here. So uh, that's what we're going to mess with. Now, the other thing we need to do is we need to set up a public variable. Uh, so say public, and we'll call this one info txt. Okay, this is basically a variable that will be available to any of these subroutines, any of the macros within the user form. And that's important later because we want to put whatever the default message is, we want to store it into that variable so we can go back to it and return to it anytime we want. All right, so it's very easy. Basically, uh, when the user form starts, we're going to set up a message that'll go into that label, this label here, and we're also going to store the same message in uh, this variable so we can reuse it anytime we want in the background. So let's go back to user form and let's make one other little event first of all. Let's see, scroll up. Here it is, initialize. Okay, initialize is whenever the user form opens. Whenever the user form opens, we need to do those two things that I just talked about. So we'll say me dot, that means user form one dot because it's the current container. So me dot or user form one dot info text. Remember that name? That's the name we just created. It comes up now. So me dot info text, that variable right there is going to be equal to, and we'll say this is the default message. Welcome. Something like that, right? Uh, you might have something more meaningful. Surely you will. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to set up this variable to store our default message when the user form opens, the initialize, right? Now, while we're in the neighborhood, we might as well set up the label. So we're going to say me dot lbl info. So that's that label right here. That's this one right here, okay? So that label is going to be equal to, now do I want to retype this whole message? No. We already stored it in me.info text, so we might as well say me.info text because we already stored that message. So we'll just reuse it right away. Put that stuff right into the label. Let's try this step first, okay? So let's hit F8 a few times, or you can hit F5 if you want to zoom to it. So me.info text now contains that information. And since it contains that information, let's shove that over into that label. And I'll hit F8 one more time. So, uh, whoops, let's hit F5. It's trying to zoom to it. So this is the default message, welcome, right? But nothing's happening when I hover anywhere else. That's easy to fix. So let's go ahead and exit out of our user form. Double click anywhere you want, and here's where the magic happens, okay? So let's do this. Uh, first of all, let's set up something to happen on the hover or the mouse move on one of the buttons. So how about button one? Let's tell, uh, let's tell this label to say something else whenever they mouse move, whenever they hover over this button. I'm going to double click, and I don't care about the click event, I care about the mouse move. Remember, that's hover. So forget the click event, who cares? Now, whenever they hover over command button one, I want me.label info, that label at the bottom, to be equal to something different. Uh, this is the first button. Wow, what a meaningful message, Dan. Well, let's try that part, okay? So if I hover anywhere else, it doesn't do anything. Nobody cares, nobody cares. But if I hover here, whoop, it changes. This is the first button. Now, if I hover away, nothing happens because we never told it what to do when we hover on the user form. But I bet you can guess what we want it to do. Whenever we hover back anywhere away from the button, aka this user form area, we want it to... Go back to the default message, right? So double click with me on the background. Now, the user form mouse move or hover event, we just want to say, hey, me.label info. That's the label at the bottom. We want that to be equal to. Does anybody, what do you, what would you put? Yeah, I don't want to retype all this stuff. We already have that stored in me.info text, the public variable that is constantly remembering the original message. So we might as well just reuse what we already have stored in memory. So the label is going to return back to whatever's in this little uh, this little storage thing here, this, this variable. And so now we'll try that, okay? Every time I hover here secretly, it's running this macro a lot and restoring that. But if I hover here, oh, wow.
This is the first button. When I hover away, boom, this is the default message. Oh, cool. So now all we have to do is the same thing that we did to this button and pretty much copy and paste that to the other button. Double click. Here's the, we don't want the click event. We want the what? You got it. It's the mouse move event for the other button, button two. So if I paste this in here and I might say something like, uh, click here to exit. Click here to exit the program or something like that, right? So now if I hover here, it says click here to exit the program. The mouse move event for the form just triggered. The mouse move event for button one is about to trigger. Boom, 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 boom. Wow, that is actually pretty freaking easy, right? So yeah, I hope you like this. This will be available for download. There will be a link in the description at the very top, and you can go ahead and download that right away and play around with it. If you enjoyed this, please click like and subscribe. And if you want to know how we created a program in Excel that turned into an EXE file, uh, as you saw in the demonstration, a partner of mine had that retire code program that analyzes whether you should take the lump sum versus an annuity, uh, which is a really cool program. But if you want to know how you can actually protect your workbooks, uh, please check out my new course, which is Excel to EXE, how to actually protect your programs and turn them into full-on EXE files from Excel. It's a really cool study and you can learn how to do it in just a few hours. And so check out that course. And uh, thanks again for watching and God bless.